So posting the auto geometry video as promised. Um, so we'll start out with the image demo. Um, the auto geometry can uh, take uh, image data as input and turn it into shapes for you. So um, I wrote up a, a, kind of a, a thing that'll uh, be able to tell the difference between this this black blob on the white background and the white shapes on the black background. Um, so that's, that's kind of useful because we can use this this black part to uh, be the like the, the terrain, and these these uh, white holes in that will be uh, shapes within that terrain. So um, if I go and I run the program. Okay, there we go. So as you can see, it looks pretty much exactly like the uh, Photoshop file. And of course, you know, I can edit this to show that it's actually doing something by a layer here. Um, oops. Let's cut some holes in these polygons. Also add another black area over here. Oh, I don't want that to go off the bottom of the image. And let's put a white, white shapes inside there. Uh, after they, they get simplified, they won't quite be circles anymore. They'll be kind of polygon, uh, simplified polygons, but. Uh, It'll still show you that it's doing its job, right? So now I've got that image, and go back, Xcode, recompile, and now we've got our cut up shapes and that extra extra terrain area on the the right. Um, the auto jumper can actually can clip bounds of the image, so you can have it repeat the edges of the image or clip the bounds. I can't remember exactly what it's set to right now. That's why I was trying to avoid the edge. So that's one thing it can do, is uh, work with images like that. Um, but it doesn't exclusively work with images. This demo here is actually a uh, procedural noise function. It's, it's whirly noise, to be specific. Um, so, you know, we can drop balls on this terrain and they roll around. That's, that's all kind of neat, but the terrain is also deformable, so we can edit the terrain. And as you can see, I'm kind of scrolling. I'm scrolling a lot, and scrolling more, and scrolling. And Kind of goes on forever, so it's I mean it's a procedural function, so it doesn't really have any ends. I can find the nope. Oh, there we go. Here's the starting area. Um, yeah, so it doesn't have any bounds and doesn't use any memory other than the uh, the the seed for it. So that's kind of cool. And uh, the other neat thing is, is we've got you know we can deform it, and the way that it stores the. Uh, deformation of the terrain actually isn't based on a bitmap either so we can you know scroll as far as we want in any direction like way way down over here and we can still make edits to the terrain and efficiently at that like actually when he's taking um about uh 20th or 20th uh, two tenths of a millisecond each time i'm you know changing the terrain here so, I mean, that could easily run in real time. Even on the iPhone, that's only going to end up being, you know, like a millisecond or two to uh, to run this. Um, so that's kind of neat. Um, of course, you have to wait at drawing it. So I'm actually coming up with a demo to do just that, uh, using the, the GPU to uh, draw the whirly noise, which should be pretty cool. Um, haven't done that yet, though. Um, lastly, we've got one that's based on uh, bitmaps, and the... The advantage of bitmaps is they're nice and easy to draw. So this, this demo is actually, you can kind of see the, the outlined shapes around it. This one's actually based on uh, CG context, so using like quartz stuff to draw. So you can see it responds really smoothly as I'm drawing through the terrain here. It uh, just kind of quickly and automatically uh, adds those new points in. And this is particularly fast because um, it's just sampling an image that's already generated for you. So this is I mean, this is fractions of a millisecond to uh, redo this. Um, and because it's a bitmap, you can fill stuff back in. The, uh, the procedural terrain I showed before actually isn't able to um, fill fill dirt back in. You can only remove it. Or you, you could do it the other way around. You can add dirt, but not, not remove it. 
Um, that's just because of the way that uh, special data structures use, using worked. And so, you know, bitmap-based terrain is pretty cool, too. It works both ways. It works really smoothly. Um, but, you know, you have to have a lot of memory to store it. Um, so, you know, for that huge you know, procedural terrain I had before, it would take megabytes and megabytes of memory to store all the bitmap data for that, which you don't really want. Um, so that's the, the three demos I have for now, at least. Um, I hope that gives you kind of a good idea of, you know, some of the things you can do with the, the auto job tree and how open it is to just doing, you know, all sorts of automatic geometry generation tasks for you.